Today we're going to create abstract chrome shapes in Cinema 4D. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs and I'm a graphic designer and visual artist and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create abstract chrome shapes in Cinema 4D. Before we start off, this method is possible in Cinema 4D but I will be using some features that are from the later versions. The Cinema 4D version that I'm going to be working in is Cinema 4D 2024. If you do have an older version of Cinema 4D you might be able to keep up with this regardless. I'm also going to be using Octane Renderer for this video. You don't necessarily need this so I'm going to show you a quick alternative in order to create something similar that I'm going to be making in Octane Render. So if you do not use Octane, stick around until the end of the video so we can do it in the vanilla Cinema 4D Renderer. With all of that being said, let's get into it. All right, so we're in Cinema 4D and basically we want to create some abstract tendrils. I'm going to go into the multi view here and I'm going to grab the spline sketch tool and I'm just going to sketch out a random line like this. Then I'm going to use the spline smooth tool to smoothen out this line. And I'm gonna to go to the right here, where as you can see, our spline is completely flat. And that's not what we want. We wanna have this move in all the three axes, if that makes sense. So basically I'm gonna go into the front view and into the right view and play around a little with this line. But I wanna keep this as smooth as possible. So under the spline smooth, I'm gonna just use that again. Maybe lower the strength a little bit. And from all axes, this kind of looks smooth. So let's go back into the 3D view and see what this looks like. And I guess this works pretty well. And if you don't really want to do this like this and you want to have a more specific line, you can always use the helix, which you can find under the spline pen tool. The next thing we're going to do is put this into a sweep. So with the spline tool selected, we'll go to the sweep, which is over here. And I'm going to hold the alt button on my keyboard or option if you're on a Mac. And this will make the spline a child of our sweep. Then I'm going to go to the spline pen tool and we're going to grab a circle. I'm going to hold shift while we let go of the circle. And this will make the circle a child of our sweep as well. And as you can see, this looks really ridiculous. So under the circle, we'll change the radius to something like 50 maybe. And now we can kind of see what's happening here. Basically, the sweep is making sure that the circle is wrapping around our spline here. Let's click on the sweep. I'm going to scroll down to details. And here in our scale, we'll make sure that one of the endpoints is uh, at zero. So the line tapers and I actually do want to have the other one tapered. So like this. Next thing we want to do is grab a cloner. We'll hold Alt or Option on my keyboard again with the sweep selected and we'll click on the cloner. And there's a couple of ways we can do this, of course. The way I want to do it is I'm going to grab a sphere. We'll click on the cloner. We'll change the mode to object and we'll drop in the sphere in the cloner. And this basically makes it so that the Tendrils are randomly wrapped around the surface, as you can see here in the distribution tab of our sphere. We can always make the uh, sweep ha basically act a little bit more differently. For example, if I hold control or command on my keyboard, I can add points in the scale graph here and we'll probably make the start a slightly little bit smaller, perhaps. Of course, this is all completely up to you and how you want to shape your abstract chrome object. Now I'm fairly happy with this one. So let's add a couple of tendrils. Maybe we'll put the count to 25, maybe 30. All right. And if you're not happy with the way that these are distributed, you can always change the seed here. But as you can see, all of the tendrils are behaving the exact same way. And that's not really what we want. So with the cloner selected, I'm going to grab a random effector and that's already does something. So under the parameter of our random effector, I'm going to check off position, but I'm going to check on scale and check on uniform scale and press 0.5 perhaps so that some tendrils will be larger, some will be smaller. Maybe we'll do 0.25 to make it a little more subtle. And then we're going to check on rotation and let's see what happens if we put 30 degrees in all directions. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Uh, as you can see, parts like this don't really look organic. And we want to make this look as organic as possible. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to just grab all of these and I'm going to put them in the volume builder. I've talked about the volume builder and the volume measure before on my channel. But basically what hap what's happening here is this basically starts making shapes based on everything that's put in the volume builder as you can see right here at the bottom. 
bring this up a little bit. The way that this works is with voxels. And you really see this once we turn off the volume measure. These are all the blocks used in the volume that we're using now. And if we want to change that and we want to make it more detailed, because as you can see, if we check it back on, you can see that we have some loose ends and it's looking a little bit blocky. So if we change the voxel size to maybe 2.5, you can see a little bit better that there's more detail in here, but it's still not as smooth. So let's just change that by clicking on SDF smooth here. And immediately our shape is a lot smoother than before. And I'm gonna actually change the voxel size to one and this will give us more detail to work with, making the tendrils a little bit longer and a little bit more detailed. All right, so the shape is looking kind of okay already, but we still have these edges right here that we want to perhaps change up a little bit. We want to make these more smoother. But the thing is, if we go into our volume builder and we add another SDF smooth, perhaps with a larger voxel distance of six, you can see that it's smoothening like the edges right here, but it's also affecting the tendrils and that's not what we want. And there's actually a way to solve this with fields. I've never talked about fields before on my channel, I think. It's also partly because I don't really use them that often, but in this case, they come in really, really handy. In multiple cases, actually, but I never really got around to learning them up until just a short while ago. Anyways, if we click on our SDF Smooth that we just made, I'm gonna go to Fields, and we'll click on Spherical Field, which you can find right here. And basically what a field does is it makes a 3D map Basically, it's, a, it's kind of similar to a Photoshop mask. It creates a field and the effect, in this case our SDF Smooth, will be visible within that field. So if we scroll down, we can change the size of our field. Let's make it 200 centimeters. And you can see this sphere here is our field right now. I'm gonna just really make the SDF Smooth a little bit more drastic. So we'll maybe do three iterations. And as you can see, the SDF Smooth is now affecting our inner parts of the circle, but not our tendrils. And I'm gonna show you the difference real quick. So if we check off the spherical field here, you can see that it will also affect the tendrils. Like this. And if we check it back on, the tendrils will be unaffected. As you can see right here. All right, so looking cool. I think uh, this is some Thing that we can use in order to create a nice abstract chrome sculpture. There's one thing that I would like to do before we start making our material and that's uh, this. If we go to display grow shading lines, we see that there's a lot of geometry in here, maybe more than we need. There's actually a way to optimize this a little bit and it's kind of similar to rasterizing your layers in Photoshop I guess. So I'm gonna right click, current state to object, and this will make the volume measure layer uh, basically a separate 3D object without all the effects applied to it. So this method is destructive the way I'm doing it right now. The shape you're seeing right now is basically a flattened version starting from the slide that we made, the suite that we did, the cloner on the sphere in the volume builder. So with this thing, we cannot really edit that anymore. But what we can do is go to here and we'll add a remesh. So again, I'm holding older option to make the volume measure object part of the remesh. This probably might take a while, but as you can see, there might be a little bit of error here and there. You can mainly see it in the geometry. You cannot really see it in a render view, but there's less geometry in here right now, thanks to the remesher here. And this is because of the zero mesh tool. And this is one of those tools that might not be in your version of Cinema 4D if you use an older version. Because if I understood correctly, the zero mesher is something that comes straight out of ZBrush and Maxon recently, or maybe not recently, I think last year somewhere they bought ZBrush. So they made zero mesher a part of Cinema 4D as well. Uh, we can also change the mesh density here. From what I understood, by the way, is that the algorithm of the instant mesh just works a lot worse than the zero mesher. The zero mesher is the best way to remesh something in Cinema 4D. Let's change the mesh density here to 50%. And as you can see, there's a lot less geometry in here compared to the other one. Uh, you can also just add in a polygon count, but for now, I think this works fine. We can maybe even go lower to a mesh density of 25, but that just takes a lot of time to recalculate. And 
it doesn't really add anything to the video from this point onward i think by the way guys if you want to keep this completely procedural what you can do is just add the volume measure to your remesh that should work the same way as you can see right here all right guys as you can see off camera i basically changed the mesh density to 25 and you can really see that there is enough geometry to create the shapes while not having a way too high density that isn't necessarily useful because this way you can navigate in your project a lot easier anyways that was the zero measure for you in a nutshell if you want me to do more videos on the volume builder and the z remesher or the remesh in general let me know in the comments down below but for now let's start creating our scene so i'm gonna get so i'm gonna add an hdri environment and keep that completely black so there's no light in our scene then i'm gonna go to lights octane area light i'm gonna give this an animation tag the target and i'm gonna drop in the octane sky and this way our lights will always be directed towards the center as you can see if we move this around so that's just an easy way to always keep your lights to the center instead of, you know, having them to spin uh, each and every single one that you are adding into your scene. Anyways, let's turn down the power to maybe 15 and I'm holding control or command on my keyboard and I'm going to drag this one out to make one on the other side. Maybe lower that a little bit and with both these lights selected, I'm going to check the visibility tab and check off camera visibility. So only our object here is visible and i'm going to go to materials in the octane window and add an octane metallic material and i'm going to add that to our remesh and now it's only reflecting those really super strong lights of course so we can change that by adding some roughness to this so i'm just going to click on here and add a roughness of 0 0.05 i think that should be enough maybe we'll add one more light so i'm going to click one this one and just drag it up a little bit maybe rotate it like this as you can see we can already achieve like this nice chrome shape let's add in an octane camera and position this correctly now let's do a youtube size thumbnail all right so this is probably good enough so one thing to add in a little bit of color to this because now it's completely black and white is let's just open up our material and the note editor here and what we're going to do is add a fall off to our node editor and an octane gradient i will link the fall off to the gradient and we'll link the gradient to the specular right here and we'll change the gradient from white to black basically this now kind of looks like where we had it just now but when it's coming closer to black somewhere around here let's add in a slightly dark red color if you don't see it immediately what you can do is play around with the fall off skew factor so let's click on the fall off map here and change this slider around. As you can see, you can kind of see it here if we move it all the way to the left. So we might need to change our gradient a little bit. We'll maybe move this closer to the white color here. We'll move it closer to the white here. And let's go back and play with the full skew factor again. And as you can see, there are some slight tints of red in our composition right now. The way we can also kind of change this is change one of the lights temperature a little bit towards a more warm color and let's just make the background a little bit more transparent and add some specular depth some glossy depth i'm never really sure what the metallic one is anyways if we make our object a little bit more transparent we can actually see what's happening a little bit better than with the black background maybe we should rotate the camera a little bit to see if there's any better perspectives on this but I think what we had so far was actually pretty okay and then we can see that there's actually some color in here and if we do want to have this a little bit better lit up because i think if we zoom out yeah there might be room for another extra light so let's just move this one like right over here but i think i'm going to leave that and another way to add more light into this is perhaps if we add more roughness because this way as you can see there will be more light in this uh, thing in general. I think that's a little bit too drastic, but anyways, guys, this is the way that I would do it in Octane. Uh, I just saved this project uh, and I'm gonna make a new version for the people that wanna learn how to do this in Cinema 4D. But before we do that, I wanted to let you know that you can actually get these Cinema 4D files for yourself. So you don't have to go through all of the hassle that I did in this video in order to create some cool Chrome shapes. You can also use this setup and basically change around stuff with the cloner or in the sweep in order to create all kinds of different chrome shapes. 
So the way you can actually get access to this project file is by becoming a member of the Dreadlips Patreon. Thanks to the people who support me on Patreon, I'm actually able to create a weekly video tutorial for you guys. If it wasn't for my patrons, I would be forced to get another job and I wouldn't be able to create these tutorials for you guys. So that means no Dreadlips. So a huge shout out to all of my patrons. As a thank you for becoming a patron, you get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials. At this point, I have well over 100 tutorials and most of those come with a project file and it's either a Photoshop file, Cinema 4D file, Illustrator file, whatever. And besides that, you'll also get access to a 15% discount in my asset web store where I sell textures and more. On top of that, you'll also get an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs Discord community server, which is our Discord server where we share our work, give each other feedback and inspiration, and basically talk about what it means to be a creative person. You can join the Discord for free, by the way, but patrons get an exclusive role. There's also another tier, which is slightly more expensive, but this will get you access to all of the project files from my Creatober series, which is over 30 project files a year, as well as exclusive videos, such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to create death metal logos from scratch, and many, many more. So if you wanna become a patron member yourself, there's a link down in the description. Once again, a huge shout out to all of my Patreons, because without you, there wouldn't be no Dreadlabs. If you are on a budget and you are not able to afford a Patreon subscription, you can always subscribe for one month and then unsubscribe at any time because you can get access to everything that I just mentioned, even if it's just for a month. Every month there will be new tutorials coming, so new project files will be added every month, but of course, you can cancel any time. And if you're on a really, really, really tight budget, that's also completely fine, of course, no worries. If you still want to support Dreadlabs, you can like this video, comment down below to help us with the algorithm, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. We also have an Instagram page that you can follow if you are more on Instagram than on YouTube. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, let's get back into the video. Alright, so I duplicated our project, removed basically all of the Octane elements, and I also flattened our rematch as you can see right here. We can also delete these two now. Uh, the reason I did that is because this just speeds up things a slight bit more. Well, just for the sake of the tutorial. And that's because the volume builder keeps recalculating everything and the remesher might also be recalculating a lot of things when you add stuff like materials, even though that's not really necessary, I think. But yeah, just for the sake of the tutorial and have things speed up a little bit, I just basically flattened out this remesh. So I changed the render to physical and under the options, I removed the default light. And the reason for that is because now we can create our own light setup without everything being lit for no reason. So we'll add in some light. Do one right here, maybe one right here, and just do one right here with a little more to the top, perhaps like this. Then we'll add a new material, add this to our remesh, and under the reflectance tab, we'll add a GGX. We can just delete the default reflection here. And under the layer one, which is just our chrome reflection, we don't really need to change that much, actually. We can just play around with the roughness if we want to. But for now, let's just leave this alone and see what this looks like. Okay, this already kind of looks the way that we want it to be. Uh, maybe we'll add in one more light or remove these lights a little bit, around a little bit to add the camera and we'll see what is the best position of our camera to be in. And I think maybe from here somewhere, this might look okay. And this actually looks pretty dope, if you ask me. One thing to note here is the reflection here is really buggy. And there's a way we can fix that. And this will speed up your render process drastically. So I'm not gonna do it in this video because it just takes a long time. If you use the physical renderer, you go to physical here and you change the sampling quality to something custom, uh, especially the sampling subdivisions right here. The higher you make this number, the longer your render time is, but the better quality your reflection will be. If you are in the standard renderer, you can do this under the material tab. So if you go into the material here, you can change the sampling subdivisions right here. And of course, if you're not happy with certain aspects, you can change the colors of the lighting, the position of the lighting in order to make your composition work better. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope you find it useful. The volume builder and the volume mesher are really powerful tools in Cinema 4D and their possibilities are essentially endless. I personally do have a lot of cool personal projects coming up with them, including an asset pack, but more on that in the future. But for now, I hope I inspired you enough to start creating your own abstract objects in Cinema 4D. Like I said during the video, if you want to support my channel, you can become a Patreon member of mine through the link down below in the description. And if you found this video useful, please leave a like and a comment down below and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. With all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you guys in the next video.